Welcome everybody to the second episode of Hot Topics for Christianity. My name is David Orr, otherwise known as Gaiman for God. This episode we're going to be discussing the concept of tattoos and body mods and the biblical truths behind whether or not God is okay with those things. And we're going to get started right now. Just as a quick recap, in case you didn't see the very first episode where we discussed the LGBT community, first of all, pause this video after you've clicked the card above and made sure you went and watched that one because while it's not necessarily a prerequisite to this to understand it, it definitely gives you more of a concept of what this series is intended to do. It's not intended to bash on any particular group, no matter what it may sound like. What it's intended to do is shed biblical truth on the concepts that we're going to be discussing and hopefully that comes across in the way that I deliver the messages. And I want to start off by saying this as well. I have a lot of friends who have gauges and tattoos. I've got a buddy of mine who's actually going into ministry and he is tattooed. He's got tattoos, none of, not all of which are like, hey, God's cool and rock on. Some of them are just really dope tattoos that don't necessarily go against God, but they aren't like 100% glorifying God either, if that makes sense. They're just kind of neutral, and I think they're really dope. He's also got gauges in his ears, and honestly, I dig his style, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> so the first thing I want to cover is the question, does the Bible explicitly state not to have tattoos? Short answer is no. There's a verse that a lot of people point to. I'm going to share it with you on screen here. It's Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28 from the New King James Version. It says it this way. You shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor tattoo any marks on you. I am the Lord. One of the most important things that we can look at when we're looking at biblical truth is context to verses. Whether or not I'm using them to defend my position or to go on the offensive against someone else's position, I definitely want to make sure that the context is clear. The context in Leviticus is first of all Levitical law, which has everything to do with the Jewish population in the Old Testament. It is not necessarily directed at Gentile believers because Gentile believers were not yet a thing. What I mean by that for most folks may be watching this going, what in the world is a Gentile believer? Well, most of us know who Jews are, so I think that that's okay to, to, to kind of move past that one. But Gentile believers are people who are past Jesus's death who have chosen to believe in him. That's a Gentile believer or a Christian as most folks would call them in today's world. So what I'm trying to illustrate is Levitical law was targeted primarily at the Jewish population of the time and it was also discussing some paganistic rituals that had to do with handling and mourning death of another person in your life. And that's what this verse in context is talking about. It is not telling you to not get tattoos. I know that's what a lot of people would want to say because it literally says, quote, nor tattoo any marks on you. To most people, if you just read that and don't look at the context to the rest of what's going on there, you would think, absolutely, there's no reason you should get a tattoo if you're a Christian. Well, that's not what the verse is in context, and I want that to be very, very clear. We're definitely seeing a cultural shift, too. I've noticed that a lot. You know, I mentioned my buddy earlier who's going into ministry. I've also noticed a lot of youth pastors that have tattoos, not necessarily covered in them head to toe, but like just got a few tattoos that are exposed on their arm. Maybe they got a sleeve, got a lot of different things, as well as body mods such as gauges, you know, piercings, those kinds of things as well. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think that pulls away from their ministry. I think if anything, especially for a youth pastor, because the youth of today's world are definitely, at least in America, I can say this, are much more prone to get tattoos, get gauges, get piercings and all that kind of stuff. I think it really is, especially for youth pastors, a huge advantage. Am I saying that a youth pastor that doesn't have them should go get them? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that they do allow them to be a little bit more relatable, I think, and that's just part of why God's using them in a youth ministry capacity. That said, though, the Bible also, on the converse side, does not explicitly say to have tattoos, like you must have tattoos if you're going into this ministry or anything like that. It doesn't say that anywhere, I promise you. 
again, we're just seeing that culturally that that is an increase, and it's not just in the Christian church, it's definitely in America as a whole. One thing that I would like to touch on that definitely is something that is against tattoos is one simple concept, and please don't think that I'm against tattoos by saying this, I'm sharing this with you because it is a real thing. If you have a tattoo on your body that's blasphemous towards God or the Christians or the church or anything like that, I would encourage you to get a cover-up done. That's not because of any other reason than you might be stumbling someone else. You, it, This is the thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, right at the end of the verse, it says, For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. I know that, personally speaking, from my own experience, it's very hard for me to look past the, the surface of people. I have a hard time with that, and I have to fight myself and go, no, that's not what God does, so why am I doing it? But most people don't fight that urge, especially those that may not be believers, or maybe they show up to a church and they're like, oh, this guy's got tattoos all over himself and they're all blaspheming God, but he seems to be a Christian so I can get away with it. Well, yes and no, but what I'm trying to share with you is this is a simple version. If you have, I'm gonna use an example, a pentagram tattooed on your body somewhere, probably after you become a believer, I would encourage you to get that just covered up in some way. There are so many incredible artists out there that could do amazing things, especially with something as simple as a symbol. And it's just really cool. I've seen a lot of great cover up. It blows my mind, to be honest with you. With all this said, just a little personal piece of advice for whatever my two cents is worth. Number one, I want to clarify. I don't personally have tattoos anywhere, both visible and non-visible. Do I intend to have tattoos later on in life? Absolutely. Without a doubt, I'd love to have several tattoos. I've got plans for sleeves on my arms, several different things. As my health improves, I intend to do that, Lord willing, because I know they're very expensive. But I want to encourage you to think about this. Every time you go get a tattoo, tattoos are similar in a lot of ways to a hat, a scarf, or anything else that's a fashion statement. In that context, they're similar. The big difference though is that you can take a hat off, you can take a scarf off, you cannot just simply remove a tattoo. That's not how that works, as many of us I'm sure are aware. So I encourage you to think about this concept. If I'm gonna get this tattoo, if I look back on it 25 years from now, will I still like that tattoo? If the answer is yes, carry on doing as you were, I think that's great. And I'm not the type of person who's like, oh, what's gonna happen when your butterfly turns into a weird looking thing when you're old because you're wrinkly? No, I'm not saying that. You know, is that a reality? Sure, that's a reality, but I'm pretty sure you understand that. I don't think I need to drive that one home. That's like, a, oh, okay, that's just life. But if you would think 25 years from now that you'd still enjoy the tattoo you're about to get, Get on in there and get that fresh ink, bruh. That's just what I'm gonna say. Again, my aim with this video is simply to shed biblical truth on the subject of tattoos and body mods. Again, this is the second episode in a bi-weekly series called Hot Topics or Christianity. If you enjoyed, and if this maybe answered some questions you might have had about tattoos and body mods, make sure to leave this video a thumbs up so I know to keep making these kinds of videos for you, as well as doing me a favor clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell next to it so you can get notified for when I upload my next video. I do have a weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly series, three different ones that are uploaded at different intervals so that you guys can get a little taste of who I am, what I do, and why I do it every single time I upload a video. Also, be sure to check the description for the compiled link that contains all of the links to my social media that I use on a regular basis. I do make unique content for each of those versus here on YouTube as well as versus my Twitch channel. That link also included in the description. I encourage you to go drop by the Twitch channel and leave a follow while you're there so you can get notified for when I go live the next time. The final link that I really wanna draw your attention to in the video description is our Discord community. We call ourselves the Game and Family for a reason. I don't require or ask that you are a Christian to join the server. However, I ask that you respect, just like I ask the Christians to respect everyone's beliefs and just love on people. That's all I ask for because the community's motto, especially in that Discord, is life is difficult, don't do it alone. My name is David Orr, otherwise known as Gaming for God, and until next episode, I'm signing off.